Hello, Mr. Vijay. Hello. Vijay, why Steve Jobs is so popular and hard to too many? Uh, Steve Jobs was born in the year uh, 1955 on uh, 24th Feb. And not many of them know that he was born to a Syrian uh, Muslim family. Huh. So just because of his, uh, their, you know, financial conditions, uh, they gave him away to a Paul family. Basically, Pauls, you know, they're Christians. And that's the prime reason why Steve Jobs' full name is Steve Paul Jobs. Okay. Yeah. So right from his childhood, he had a lot of inquisitiveness to learn. And uh, he joined a college named Reed College. Uh, and then in the same year, he discontinued. So there are a couple of reasons. One is he was not, he didn't like, you know, the education system, the way they thought there. And second is also the financial conditions that they were facing, their family, was, they were facing. Then uh, not many of them know that uh, Steve Jobs used to walk for almost about uh, seven kilometers uh, just to go to Iskon and then have a hearty meal. So he faced a lot of hardships, you know, during his childhood and also during his teens. And uh, it was over there in Iskon. He had a lot of, uh, he gained a lot of knowledge on Hinduism as well as he also had a lot of inquisitiveness to learn a lot about uh, India. Hmm. So in 1974, what he did is uh, he used to work for a gaming company called Atari. He sold, uh, I mean, uh, he actually, you know, uh, whatever money he made with that money, he uh, traveled uh, to India in 1974. And he was in India for almost about seven months in Himalayas. And uh, he was staying in an ashram. And then he used to spend a lot of time on uh, meditation. And he also learned a lot on what is called Zen Buddhism, which he actually later followed it in his life. Okay. So after, you know, he came back uh, from uh, uh, India, he went back to California. So basically he's born in California and then he also had his initial schooling. He was raised in California. He went back to California. And in California, he met his childhood friend named Steve Wozniak. So Steve Wozniak was basically a computer wizard. He was a genius was also very good in uh, electronics and on uh, April 1st 1976 he started Apple company and that too he started it in a garage oh. yeah so he started Apple company and uh, initially you know they were working out a lot on what is called the printed uh, circuit boards okay. so from the printed circuit boards too they got into what is called the Apple computers so the first version was a huge hit they also made a lot of money but then the sensation that they created was the release of what is called the Apple II computer. Hmm. So Apple II computer had what is called the screen, computer screen. And people were also amazed to know that whenever you type something, you can actually see it on a screen. So Apple II was a huge hit. They became way too popular. They became what is called a household name in the US. In terms of technology, they were able to create a revolution. So in 80s and 90s, he was also known as the, basically a pioneer of what is called the personal computer uh, revolution. So uh, there's also one other thing which not many of them know, that in 1979, uh, he visited what is called the Polo Alto Research Center. Polo Alto Research Center. Polo Alto Research Center. So Polo Alto Research Center belongs to what is called Xerox Corporation. Okay. We all know Xerox Corporation. Xerox machines are again, you know, their household names. So they had a team and they were doing a lot of research on computers. So it was over there, he was fascinated, uh, you know, on what is called the graphical user interface, GUI. And then he wanted to incorporate uh, this GUI and uh, he tried it. So in 1983, they came out with what is called uh, Apple Lisa, but it was not that successful. But in 1984, they released what is called Macintosh. Yes. And just like Apple II, Macintosh was a huge hit. It was very, very popular. But then not many of them also knew the way, you know, Steve Jobs used to function. He is considered to be one of the greatest leaders who has ever lived. So what he believed was that you have some of the smart, the best of the brains, you know, that they are there throughout the world. So he believed that uh, what you have to do is you need to get the best of the brains and then create an ecosystem wherein people work, you know, for your organization and then they can work towards your vision. So what Steve Jobs used to do was uh, he used to basically hire people who were the greatest individual contributors. 
and most of the employees you know who worked they were the greatest individual contributors and in turn they also happened to be managers later on just because they were the best you know person for that particular job so he was looking for people who had technology at their fingertips they were passionate about technology and they also worked towards the computer uh, the vision you know which basically the apple company had so apple wanted to bring out the best of the technology and then the best of the products to the people yes so steve jobs you know he spent a lot of uh, time you know his in his initial days on hiring you know the best of the people and the hiring process used to start somewhere in the morning during the breakfast and it used to go till the late uh, dinner so he was very choosy because he never wanted anyone to question so he used to hire the best of the core team which we say he used to hire them personally so he spent a lot of time on hiring the best of the people and when when apple company was doing very well they said that now it has to be professionally managed so they did that they hired you know some of the best mbas from the top notch uh, institutions but then that didn't work out because what he believed was any individual who is hired they should be the greatest individual contributors now these people knew how to manage but they didn't know how to do anything ha huh. so there was one person you know he hired when they were working out on macintosh he hired debbie coleman she is basically an english literature major uh, with an mba from uh, stanford university and she had absolutely no experience in the manufacturing sector so she joined apple as a financial manager and she was overlooking the entire uh, macintosh team and the speciality was when this macintosh was released in the market again not many of them knew that when you open the screen uh, inside there were signatures of the core the macintosh team who had worked into it yeah. so most of the employees who used to work in this organization they used to work as an intrapreneur so entrepreneur is something wherein you start an organization and then you build an organization and you hire employees but intrapreneur is something wherein the employees are working within the organization they work you know for the growth of that particular organization and they work you know as if they are the ceos of the company so he created what is called the culture of intrapreneurship so when apple was doing very well uh, then uh, you know he decided to hire what is called john skelly so john skelly then was the ceo of pepsi company and very beautifully you know he told him that do you want to just sh- uh, sell what is called the sugar uh, cans for the rest of your lives or do you want to be part of the digital revolution which apple is into so immediately john skelly he could get the pulse of uh, steve jobs so he uh, resigned uh, the ceo of uh, pepsico and then he joined apple but then things didn't go well because somewhere in 85 in 85 Apple was facing very stiff competition from IBM computers and not only that Steve Jobs was basically a perfectionist yes so he was facing a lot of problem you know with his core leadership team and that's when John Skelly and as well as the other board of directors they decided that uh, Steve Jobs should be uh, let off you know from the company so he was really very very upset he was down he was also depressed because he started this organization from scratch and then you know he was forced to leave uh, this company so he came out then he started a company called next so which was basically into education and then they were trying to provide what is called software you know for the education system okay. and after that he also started a company called pixar so pixar is a huge uh, hit pixar animation is very very popular so 1995 they released the first 3d animated movie called the toy story and pixar became a household name so apple was not doing very well the uh, apple the share the price was actually coming down their sales were coming down and that is when again the board decided that they'll have to bring back uh, steve jobs great yeah so that's absolutely great a person who was asked to leave was again you know called back and what uh, steve jobs he did was whatever shares he had you know when he left apple he sold all the shares except that of apple he retained all the shares of the apple just because you know he had a confidence that uh, when it comes to what is called attending the board meetings and then part of the the reporting system which was there uh, he will be kept updated because he is one of the shareholder of the company so now you know in uh, mid 90s you know when uh, he was called back to the organization uh, he happily you know joined uh, the apple organization so he had to rejoin this organization 
and the best part of uh, Steve Jobs was they asked him to be the CEO of the company but then he had a very different strategy of his own. He never wanted to be a CEO, initially was the advisor of this particular company. And then slowly down the lane in one of the board meeting he told them that if you want to see Apple at a very different level, the vision you know what he had, he had asked all the board members to actually quit and he said that all the board members have to be replaced. So it was a very you know tough decision that he had to take and also it was nice that the board had to accept you know whatever he told and then later on what we see is actually a history. Then he with a new board he became the CEO of the company and many of them in those days were well acquainted with Walkman and they used to uh, carry what is called the audio cassette tape you know in their pockets that is how it was and then he worked on what is called a very different technology altogether called the nanotechnology and he came out with uh, iPod and initially people were amazed then how can you have such a small device which will have about 25 to 30 song, 30,000 songs. So he came out with iPad, he was also the pioneer for the world's first touchscreen mobile phone. So iPhone became a huge hit. Later on you know in 2010 he also released what is called iPad. So not many of them were actually willing to take because his pricing strategy also was very very different. They used to charge what is called a premium. But then he very firmly believed and Apple is one company wherein there was there used to be a lot of craze. So every time you know whenever they used to release any product in the market people actually used to stand in queues and overnight you know they used to just stand outside the Apple stores in order to buy this product. Again Apple uh, store was his brainchild wherein he felt that Apple should have their own stores you know selling the products. So right from the scratch you know this, uh, this individual Steve Jobs was able to build an organization and we all know in terms of technology, in terms of market capitalization, it is one of the largest you know, companies in the world. So it had that sort of a market capitalization and it was all created by Steve Jobs. But unfortunately, you know, he was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer. So one uh, thing you know, which Steve Jobs himself he regret, regrets is he delayed you know, the treatment process by nine months. And that had a very severe impact on his health. He lost a lot of weight. Then he had to undergo surgery. And it was in the year 2011. He basically handed over all his responsibilities to Tim Cook. Probably that's when he also realized that uh, he is going through the last stages of his life. And on October 5th, 2011, he breathed his last so the fact is a person you know who started an organization from scratch to creating what is called the digital revolution. Steve Jobs always stands not only as a pioneer but he is also a living example you know for many to follow in this world. <laughs> That's really great. Thank you. Thank you so much Mr. Vijay. Thanks. Thank you.